If you search for Nginx on Docker Hub, you'll see the official Nginx image as the first result. So this is the one that we're going to use. And so let's get started on configuring this. First thing that we need to do is I'm going to create a separate folder for our Nginx configuration. So I'm going to call this Nginx. And we're going to create one file, and that's going to be the default.conf file. So this is just going to be a basic configuration for our Nginx server. And within here, we have to define a server block. And so this is all just Nginx specific configs, nothing related to Docker. And here we'll just say our Nginx server is going to listen on port 80. And then now this is where we actually set it up to redirect traffic to our uh, express uh, or our node containers. So we say location, and then we provide a, uh, a URL. So this is going to be the URL of the request this Nginx server receives. Uh, and so here we could just do a slash and then put in all of our configs. And then here we can say the, the most important one is proxy underscore pass. And then here uh, for the proxy pass field, we specify the URL of the servers that we want to uh, you know, proxy this traffic to. So we want to send this traffic to our express application or our node containers. So because our Nginx server is also a Docker container that's going to be running, it has access to DNS. So what we can do is we can type in HTTP colon slash slash, and then we can say node dash app. Because remember, we have that uh, custom network that was created by Docker Compose. And so within our Docker Compose file, we can refer to any one of these services by their name. So if I call node app, it's going to load balance between all of the node app containers that we have. And then we have to make sure that we send it on port 3000 because that's what our express servers are listening on. Now there's a couple of other properties that we need to set. Now, because Nginx is acting as a proxy, when we actually uh, proxy the original request to our express application, the Nginx server is going to strip off a few details. And these details may actually be important depending on what your application is doing. And one of the things that Nginx does is uh, you'll lose the uh, original IP address of the sender. So, you know, what was the IP address that originated that request? So we can tell Nginx to make sure that we forward that along to our node applications. Now, our node application isn't actually making use of that, but uh, if you're doing any kind of like rate limiting um, per IP address, these are all things that you want to need. So it's always best practice to configure this. And so to ensure that we uh, pass on the original sender's IP, we do proxy underscore set underscore header, and we do x dash real dash IP. And then we do dollar remote underscore ADDR. All right, and then another thing that we want to do is uh, we're going to pass in another uh, another setting or flag that's going to provide us a list containing the IP addresses at every server the client has been proxied through. So this is another thing that's just best practice. I, I definitely recommend you read up on Nginx. There's a lot of things that you can do and configure, um, but I'm just trying to get you guys up and running with the base configuration. And so I'm just going to copy this. It's a little bit of a long line. All right, and so that's going to make sure all of those um, proxy server IPs are attached to the headers. And then we're going to add in just a few other fields. So we'll do proxy underscore set underscore header, host, then dollar sign HTTP underscore host. And then we're going to copy this again. And so that's all the configurations we need. However, there's one minor tweak that I want to do. In this case, um, basically all requests are going to get forward to our Node app. Now, uh, you know, for what we're doing, we're just building a backend. However, if you wanted this Nginx server to also handle serving your front end uh, assets, what you would ultimately want to do is in your API, and we've already kind of set this up, is that for all of your routes, you want to make sure that they are listening on API uh, slash v1. Uh, slash something. So that way we know that uh, the Nginx server can actually specify that any request that starts with API is meant for our backend 
And then any request that's meant for a URL that does not have the API, um, that's meant for our front end. So since all of these requests are listening for uh, API first, well, except for this one, but we can add that real quick. Uh, what we can do is we can go back to that configuration file and we can say slash API. So in this case, uh, whatever is uh, whatever URL is passed for location, this is going to specify uh, what the request needs to look like for us to forward uh, it to our node application. So any request that comes in starting with slash API, we'll send it to our node app. And then uh, anything that doesn't have slash API right now, it's just going to drop. But in the future, we could configure it so that it can handle, um, you know, redirect that traffic to our Nginx, sorry, not our Nginx, but like a React application or whatever our front end application is. Right now, let's go ahead and go to our Docker Compose file and let's add our, add our Nginx service. So we can do Nginx. And then the image, uh, this is going to be Nginx. And then we can, and right, let me put a space, Nginx. And then I'm going to grab the stable Alpine version. All right. And so now, um, first of all, <coughs> we no longer have to publish ports for our node application. So we can remove that actually. And let's actually go into our dev and prod, make sure we remove any of the ports being opened there as well. And it doesn't look like we have anything and prod looks okay. And so let's go back to our uh, Docker compose. And then here, let's open up a port. So we'll say ports. And then let's pick uh, the port that we want to publish. So pick anything. We can do 3000 still if we want. And then we just want to make sure we map it to port 80 because that's the port that our Nginx server is listening on. And for production, actually, let's, um, I'm going to copy this. For production, it's going to be a different port. So instead of opening up port 3000, we're going to open up port 80. And we can remove that image because we're not changing anything. And actually, why even have this here? Um, I can just copy this and put this in the dev section. All right, now the next thing that we have to do is we have to get our configuration file that we built out into our Nginx container. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. We can create our own custom Nginx image that already has our configuration built in, or we can just configure a volume, specifically a bind mount, and just have it sync those two files. Uh, and so that'll, I think that's the route we're gonna go. We're just going to configure a bind mount so that we don't have to worry about building a custom image and doing all of that nonsense. So under volumes, uh, so you have to understand a little bit about where uh, Nginx looks for this config. So Nginx is going to look for this in the slash etsy slash Nginx slash conf dot D slash default dot conf file. So that's where it expects the configuration. And we're going to sync that with uh, Nginx default dot conf. So we'll just go dot slash Nginx slash default dot conf. And then uh, on the Nginx container side, we're gonna make this read only. It does. It should never have to change the configuration. So a little bit of a security check. And let's tear everything down. And let's build it back up. We're just gonna do one instance just for now. Let's just make sure everything's working. And let's try sending a request. So uh, we're going to try to log in again. And let's, let's go to the body here. And it looks like we broke our application. So let's take a look and see what exactly we broke. All right, guys. So I made a stupid mistake. I just forgot to update this to port 3000. So I had left it at 3001. So make sure we change that to 3000 because that's what our Nginx server is listening on. So now if I log in, we can see that it's successful and we did receive the cookie. All right, so it looks like we got our application up to, into a working state using Nginx as a proxy so that I can load balance requests to all of our node instances. Um, but there's a couple more things that we gotta do. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull up 
uh, this web page right here. So I just want you to search for Express and then Proxy, and it'll be the first result you should get. And it just uh, explains that we do have to add one extra configuration into our Express application when whenever our Express application is sitting behind a proxy. And this isn't technically required for our example, uh, for our demonstration project, but in a production grade project, you probably will need to add this. Um, the, the configuration right here is this app.set trust proxy. And so all this is saying is that we're going to trust some of the headers that our Nginx proxy is going to be adding onto the request. Uh, and so remember, we configure our Nginx server to uh, basically add the originating uh, sender's IP address into the headers so that if our Express application does need it, it has access to it. All, all we're doing here is we're just uh, telling Express to trust whatever our Nginx server is adding onto those headers. Uh, and so all we have to do is we have one simple configuration. So uh, if we go to our middleware, we have our session middleware. So right above this, we're going to do app.enable, and then we just say trust proxy. So that's the only thing that we have to do, but this is really just in cases for uh, when you need access to that IP address, um, which we don't, but if you're doing some sort of rate limiting, it can be, it's going to be necessary. Uh, so now that we get that done, the last thing that I want to do is I want to scale up our application again. So I want to add a second node instance. So what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, I'm just going to tear everything down. All right, and then we're going to bring everything back up. Um, but this time we're going to pass in the the dash dash scale flag. And we're going to say node dash app equals two. So we have two instances. All right, and the next thing I want to do is, uh, you know, in one of our routes or one of our route controllers, I just want to do a console.log and just have it say something. It doesn't matter say, yeah, it ran. The reason I want to do this is I want to verify that Nginx is actually load balancing the requests to all of our nodes, all of our node instances. So here I'm going to create a new window, a uh, new terminal actually, and then I'm going to split screen this. So the window on the left is going to represent the logs for node instance one. The uh, window on the right is going to represent the logs for node instance two. So here I'm going to do a Docker PS just so I can grab the name. And so I'm going to say Docker logs. I'll say node docker node app. This will be node app one dash f for follow. And I'm going to copy this and then paste that here and just change this to node app two. And so each time we send a request, I want to see a log get generated here first because of this console.log. And then ideally, Nginx should then send the next request to this one and we should see that log get generated here. So I'm going to change this to API slash v1. So that could be a get request. And let's hit send. And I think I forgot to save it. So let's save this. There we go. And now let's send the request. All right, so we can see it said, yeah, it ran on the left side. So node app one, then let's run it again. And so then we can see it runs on node app two. So it looks like it's successfully load balancing. Let's just run it a couple more times to verify. So ran on the left side, ran on the right side, left, right, left, right, left, right. All right, so we've got Nginx up and running. I think that's a good stopping point for this section.